Okay, so in this video, it's our third video in the series uh, for our parametric skateboard. We are going to be building, we're going to be designing the um, the kicks from one end uh, all the way out to the, the edge of the skateboard. And th these kicks look really long because they would be if this was an actual skateboard. But this is our, you got to re remember that the length of the skateboard from end to end is for our stock, right? And the stock of the skateboard that we're working with is 36 inches. So it's 36 inches from here all the way over to here. So if your skateboard is only 20 inches from here to here, it's going to make those kicks look really long. But what we'll do in the end is we're going to come back and we're going to cut off a bunch of the wood, right? And this is pretty standard for skateboarding is there's you're given um, you're given your stock wood and then you press it and then you actually cut out the rest of it. But you also have to remember that we're building our models, uh, we're building our molds off of the stock skateboard, okay? So our uncut skateboard. So what we're going to do now is we've got to make a work plane out here. So we're going to do a work plane offset. And that work plane offset is going to be driven by the different lengths that are selected in the board. So we have our board length that's in there. That'll be however long it is from here to here. It'll be the concave length. Um, is The concave section is going to be driven by however long you want your transition section to be. Maybe you want a longer transition or a shorter transition. So those are all going to be driven um, separately, but they all have to fit within the length, no matter what the board is, it all has to fit within that 36 inches of stock skateboard, right? So our final extrusion, our final work plane has to take that into account. So what we'll do is we'll create another variable and that variable is going to be um, rough tail length and it's going to be based on 18 inches okay so 18 inches is half of 36 so the whole board the maximum that we have is 36 inches but half of that from the center because we're only working on half the board right now is 18 inches so we're going to take 18 inches as our maximum and we're going to subtract our board length from it. And so our board length is 20 inches, but remember, we're only dealing with half the board. So the board length goes from here to here. So we need to subtract out half of that board length. Um, and, and we'll do that by just dividing the board length by two. So I don't want to get too, too crazy. I'd make it sound too crazy, it's not. We're just taking half of the, the length of the board there. Okay, so. Hopefully this works. My variables, has my syntax, I'm still working on my syntax with Onshape. All right. So we have our, our rough tail length. It's going to be eight inches. And that's what we're going to use for our work plane offset. So we're going to click our offset here, our work plane. And that work plane offset is going to be our rough tail length. Okay, so we can come, find, come down here and find our rough tail length. There it is. Now that's rough. There we go. Boom. Okay. All right. So now we've got our, our length and this will change based on the other measurements because we've linked them all together. And again, that's the goal in this project is when you make one change, it updates and accounts for it in all the other areas of the skateboard and limitations. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to then create another sketch and do some trigonometry. Oh yes, oh yes. So we're gonna create a sketch out here and this is actually a fairly straightforward sketch. It's just a rectangle and I'm not gonna do that rectangle constrained to anything. Remember if you, if you have a rectangle or you're putting in geometry into a shape and it pops up yellow, it's gonna constrain it to whatever that yellow is. And so I like to keep it so it's not constrained to anything so that I know when I put a constraint in, that's the constraint that's there. It's the only constraint that I want there. So we're going to make this one a distance of zero. Okay. And we're going to make this a distance of zero. And so now that the width of this last sketch is developed based on whatever the width of the um, of the rough board is, right? The rough width right here would be 12 inches. So 
we have that already kind of taken care of and built into it. We don't have to worry about it. And then the same thing goes for the thickness here. We want to make sure that it's driven by our board thickness from the beginning. So our board thickness of 0.5. And then now we've actually got to go in and put in some type of distance here, right? So from the, this little yellow line to this little yellow line, we've actually got to do some, whoops. Do that. Oh dear, oh dear. Let's read. I think I deleted my sketch on accident. Okay, so we've got to go in and we're gonna we're gonna put in another measure. I'm just gonna do this one more time real quick. That's probably not a terrible idea. Rectangle. We're gonna dimension it from edge to edge. You guys get to see what I do again. Not a terrible thing. Students say I go too fast sometimes. Like it's YouTube though. Like you can pause and rewind. All right, so this is gonna be our board thickness. Okay, so now if we change the board thickness, that automatically updates. Okay, and so now the final one that we've got to put in is the distance from the bottom of that sketch right there to the bottom of our existing model. So what that's going to do is in our drawing here, that distance is going to determine what the angle is, right? But the, the way we measure the board is actually by that angle. So we have to determine what the distance is based on the angle that we want, right? So we're going to have to put in, we're going to have to do some trigonometry for this. So we've actually got to do some uh, tangent. Uh, we got to actually use the tangent function in our board here. And so now what we'll do is we got to create another, um, we got to create another variable, okay? And so we're going to call this one kicktail angle. Okay, and that kicktail angle is just a number that we want. So this is what's going to be determining, and we actually have to put it in as an angle. So let's say our first one is going to be 15 degrees. We might change that later on. Again, that's the point of this is that we can go back and we can change things. Okay, so we're going to say our kicktail kick angle is 15 degrees, and that would be different than our kick nose angle. So you're going to have to come back and make a separate one of these for your for the nose, all right? It'll be the same process, it's just on the other half of the board. Okay. So now we're going to go back into our sketch, okay? And we're going to do some tangent work here. So our distance here is going to be, and we're going to go over this math in class in a minute, so I don't want to go over it too much. I don't want to, like, belabor it too much. But... On shape actually does work with your um, with your trig functions. Um, so we're actually going to say that it's a function of your kicktail length. Okay. So it's rough kicktail length, and we're going to multiply that by the tangent of your kicktail angle. Angle. I believe that should do it right there. Oh man. Again with the syntax. There we go. And so that drives that number right there. So 2.144. So as we change the kicktail angle, you will see the kicktail. Uh, you will see that 2.144 changing automatically, which is super cool. So now all we got to do, now that we have that measurement in there, is we're going to do another loft extrusion. Okay, and that was our last one. Okay, so we'll hit finish. And watch what happens now when we change our angle here. So let's say somebody or wants a skateboard that is really has a really aggressive angle. So that, let's say something like you know 21 degrees. That's quite a bit. It will change this to be 21 degrees automatically. Okay, so that's super cool. Um, 
And we're doing that not by the measurement on the side of it, but we're doing it driven through the sketch with this distance right here. So you can see it changed it from 2 point whatever it was before to now the 3.071. Okay, so that's super cool that we can do that with that trick function. So now on the other end of the board, we're almost done with this part of our model, actually. Um, on the other end of the board, you got to do the same thing that you did with this one, except we've got to create some more variables. And I know that we're starting to get a lot of variables in here, so you got to keep track of your variables. So I'm going to actually make it in a separate video. Uh, but if most, some of you are going to be able to go, oh, okay, I get what he's doing, it, and just name the variable something else. Just double check on my other video that you have the, the correct variable names in there. Um, because we're going to name them the rough nose length and the rough uh, nose angle for the next video. Um, and that's just going to give us the front of our board. So um, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you back in the next video.